Today I'm reacting on the AWS architecture of Veritiv, a company that is uh, in the supply chain management and into the supply chain, a company that supplies the businesses that where you're buying your stuff with the goods. So let's look at their architecture. Let's look at what they are doing. Handle that. Yes, yeah. And actually with COVID-19 and the impact there, the need to have timelier, more accurate analytics on our uh, orders and as well as our demand yep. was huge for our senior leadership to be able to make key decisions. It's already the standard thing that you see all the time. People are actually having their processes in line and they need to have more value, more knowledge. And that's where the where they're building something then in the cloud where that is not the main use case, but it's an analytics use case. So for the company's future. Okay. So my team was actually tasked to look at how we produce our sales and our demand today at an invoice level and take a step back and look at it from a different perspective. So we brought in and utilized AWS's architecture and services to do that. Cool. Yeah, as I said here, that's most likely here in the, in the on-prem thing, that's most likely where they have all their all their stuff, all their processing already. So how do you orchestrate all of that data set together? So today what we have is we actually have an on-premises database that stores our sales data at that invoice level and some other key attributes. See? That data is actually piped through our VPN and we use DMS and CDC um, to be able to pull that data and then populate it into our Redshift cluster. So you see here, what they're doing is you have your on-prem stuff here. You want to connect it somewhere, somehow with the cloud. And that's where you need to have some, some security in there. And that's where the VPN is coming in. They have a VPN connection here. And then they're, they're putting stuff in the Redshift. Fairly simple. I don't know why they directly pull it into a data lake, but let's see, let's see where they're going with this. Makes it available to not only our data lake and read back completely in, but also other analytics and reports outside. Okay, so mm, I think they're, they're already there. They're skipping a step here. Uh, how they push it from Redshift to the data lake or are they already pushing it from here to here? Not sure, not sure. Of our lake. Once we have that data in, now we, are, we started receiving files, flat files, things of that nature at the order level. Okay. Um, and some of that demand from our ERP system that came into our drop bucket, our S3 drop bucket here. So as a, this is a very interesting point. Before the drop bucket here, on the left here is actually the ERP system uh, where that is dropping data in here. I personally, I would not do this with a with a bucket. I think oh, the bucket stuff, working with files and so on, it's annoying. So why not build an API here that the ERP is actually using? Mo my, might be a lot better to actually process. Uh, I'm guessing these are standardized export. That's why they are using a bucket here. So the ERP drops stuff in here and yeah. They don't want to go the separate route to re redo this. When those files landed, they actually kick off an SQS that handles all of our um, messaging services. Pretty standard SQS or a trigger, having a trigger on S3, pretty standard. Okay. And at that point, SQS will launch what we call our initiator Lambda, Lambda job. This Lambda job actually talks to DynamoDB and it pulls the metadata and some other key information about these files that are coming in through this pipeline. Okay. So when you look at this pipeline, maybe I can get myself on the other side here. So already this is some, some standard stuff. So they are, they are basically doing a trigger on the, sim on the simple queue service and this then uh, has this lambda here has then a trigger on sqs 
where it processes the data and puts it into DynamoDB. Fairly simple. Uh, what is in this message? In this message is not is not the file. In this message is just the the actual information of the file. So the lambda is is taking is accessing S3 and then processing the file. This is just like the the metadata here. Meta. Right. So that's that's also pretty standard and then they write it into DynamoDB. Okay, okay. I get it. Once it's done, the lambda will uh, from that information be able to understand how to populate our data lake and push that information okay. into the appropriate structures. So that's that's something that I personally don't like is and I don't I know why they're why they have to do this. They have to do this because uh, SQS wants you to process the uh, the message the message is gone. So you can not take two consumers on this on this uh, simple queue. So this lambda actually has two jobs now. This lambda has the job of writing here and this lambda has the job of writing actually here. Um, I would would do this I would most likely split this so that you you have two lambda functions or like this so that you have two lambda functions one lambda function that takes out of the queue stores it here and one that actually writes to dynamo but that would not be possible with SQS so most likely uh, you, you would split this delete this here and use something like kinesis or something right so this, what you could do, mm, mm. but I, I understand the problem here. The problem is SQS is only, the message can only be processed once. So this, because yeah, this it would be easier to, to actually split this also for the development because the, dev the distribution to the data lake would not interfere with the, with the writing to DynamoDB. And if it, there could be two developer teams working on this within our raw and refined buckets. Once we're out into the refined and raw buckets here in our data lake, we have a trigger on our S3 bucket that's event driven and it will launch our next Lambda job. And this Lambda jobs are actually is, is our complex okay. Lambda job that does not only the merging of both data sets, so we merge our order cells that come in through one pipeline as well as our inventory cells that comes through the other and we apply some different logic and, and some rules and exceptions that we have in orders. It also then will create a new file. Files, 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 right? They're working a lot with files. And don't forget, don't forget this. This is S3 and this is data lake here, but these are actually, th that's, it's both S3, right? So it's both S3 and the, that's uh, the annoying part when you're working with the data lake. They're, they're getting data from up here and storing it here. They're de getting data from here. Then they're merging it with this. So uh, sometimes I, I understand this can be and can be getting annoying. And that file, we apply some Python stats model packages wow. and things like that to create a demand and to fan that data out to be able to look at what not only our current, but maybe our future demand is going to be. Once that completes, that is fed into Redshift again. At okay, so they, they are, what they're doing is the, basically pretty standard stuff. They're using the data lake as basically the source for their analytics. So this, this would be, this could also be an A here. This could be the analytics part. So they're, they're using both of these data sets, combining them, writing some analytics, and these are the, the predictions or the demand that's coming up here and then on the right side most likely here there would be some some uh, bi tool here on the right or, or whatever that is going to visualize this at which point our business users and all of our leaderships can use many different tools to be able to query and get that data out on a daily basis as i said bi tool most likely that's amazing so what benefits did you saw uh, out of this architecture he didn't explain why they are using DynamoDB here, by the way. This the, everything this looks like Dynamo is completely useless here. And this this has actually 
this is not that simple. This needs some resources if the data is coming up from here. So, mm. so one of the biggest benefits was, especially with this solution, was that we had a very small focused team that could work in an agile method. Okay. Oh, and agile. we team. were able to use a lot of these services and really find the best tool for the job when it came to an AWS service without increasing spend right. and cost. Uh, the other thing is speed to business. These type of solutions, and specifically this solution, we were able to deliver within four to five weeks, whereas other more traditional type of routes would take longer. Yeah, that's that's something. This stuff is this stuff is fairly quick to deploy and fairly uh, easy to manage. The thing is, what they're doing also, they're working a lot with files. They're working a lot with S3 with Data Lake. Um, so and with lambda so it's fairly fairly simple fairly cheap uh they're not using these big tools they're using redshift although most likely the data in redshift will be limited so uh okay okay i can i can attest to that that's good so overall great great performance as well that's amazing well what is next for verative Oh, okay. So next for us is to really focus on our data lake and these processes, mature it, grow it, um, increase our, our cloud solution presence. Also, we are implementing things today, such as cloud formation for these things to automate them more and move us closer to a DevOps. Okay, that's the, that's the, that's the interesting part. Like moving, moving into DevOps and automating everything Yes, that's the route to go. That's always the route to go when you when you build a proof of concept and you're just working with it. So what he's telling you that this is new, they're currently working on the automation part. They're working on the engineering part of this. Now that it, it works, let's automate this. Uh, DevOps, as I said before, will be a bit tricky to actually, if these Lambda here is, is one big Lambda that feeds this, that also feeds this can be annoying most likely they also don't not only have one lambda here they have a bit more complicated stuff here um solution i see uh lastly we have some sage maker and machine learning type of work going on right now yeah and where, where do they have this let's go back where is most likely sage maker working sage maker is then running um here you have your sage maker and this is is going to work with the data lake that's uh let's put a big s in here that's most likely what they're doing they will not work with dynamodb as a source they will not work with redshift redshift is more or less just the tool here for for the bi tools to actually visualize the results because it's fairly easy to access uh, from from other systems they, maybe they're even using the the aws uh thing uh, i always forget how this is called um yeah that's that's what they're that's what they're looking for here type of work going on right now that's amazing so um thank you so much for going over your architecture yeah okay thank you so much uh, i think it's uh it's an interesting architecture a very simple thing with buckets with files um pushing files around uh, i don't know i i i think if they would do this with kinesis and uh and split then the the one uh, lambda that works that feeds the data lake and feeds dynamo if they would explain a bit what they're doing with dynamo i'm not sure most likely they're they're doing some visualization stuff there as well very interesting um very tiff I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments if you like this and if you should want to do some some more stuff because they like AWS has literally I think 500 of these or something. So th there's a lot of potential to actually do more of these reaction videos to these. Let me know in the comments. I also put the link to the playlist for AWS uh, below. See you later.